Right. We are a society, we've been conditioned, unfortunately, to bondage and moving away from freedom. We've allowed big government to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't matter whether it's Democrat or Republican. Do you consider yourself a Tea Party person? I don't use that word. I, I use the word liberty. Used to be a running one-liner around a newsroom. If you ever got tired of reporting the news and wanted to make a difference, then step out of the comfort zone and run for office. Our next guest has done just that. Going from the airwaves of WSOC-TV in Charlotte, North Carolina, to running for Congress in the 12th District, where it will not be easy. Never is, actually, when you're in a fight. Welcome in candidate Vince Coakley joins us today on Midpoint. Vince, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks very much for your invitation. Vince, it is a pleasure to have you here. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things you said that, that catch. Well, before I do that, why get into politics? Because we all know that, that, and you've probably heard the joke before, why don't you just go ahead and run for office? And now you decided to go ahead and give up that anchor seat and run for office. What is it that captivated you that said, I have to run? Well, one of the things I'm concerned about is the direction of the country. We're at a place in our history where there is a real uh, void when it comes to leadership. We are not getting the kind of leadership that we need in this country, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to run. I'm very concerned, especially about the economy. You know, of course, that our economy in the first quarter has contracted. Uh, what we need is an economy that's stronger, that's generating jobs, and the only way to do that is to put restraints on Washington. They are the ones who are causing the problems here in the nation's capital in terms of the regulations, the kinds of things that are preventing those who want to create jobs, who want to create opportunity, and those restraints need to be pulled away so the American people can do what they do best. Now, you mentioned the phrase, and I, I caught this uh, in the soundbite that we ran earlier, you said that the American people have been conditioned to bondage. Would you explain that? Well, unfortunately, what's happened is that this entire system has been turned on its head. This is what makes America so great is the fact that we have a government that was set up to protect the people from government. And unfortunately, now this has been turned on its head and too many of us are working for the government. We're working to sustain this government that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so they're stealing our wealth. They are stealing our freedoms. And so what we need to do is to bring this back under control. But the only way we can do that is to help educate people so they understand the values of freedom, what this country was founded on in the first place. So I think that is very, very important. Vince, you get a chance then, let's say, you get elected, you go to Washington. First thing that you do, what is it? Well, one of the first things I want to do is to find out who here in Washington, D.C. is working on plans to roll back regulations and get our economy moving again. And that's what that's the first first job. It's I think anybody in the real world recognizes that this is the biggest concern that regular people have in the 12th district or anywhere else. We want a stronger economy. We want jobs generated. And if you notice what's been going on for quite some time, this is really not the focus of attention. We've been talking about all kinds of other things, but the elephant in the room, it's the economy, stupid. It's not getting the attention it deserves. Why is it you think it hasn't gotten that attention? And take this right from the White House on down. Well, there are a number of reasons for that. I mean, obviously, uh, hey, I've been in the news business, and there are a lot of things that are distracting people. And unfortunately, I think we have been conditioned, like my quote about being conditioned to bondage, we have been gradually conditioned to accept things that are unacceptable. Have you been to the gas station lately and seen what gas prices are? I mean, they've been high for years, and we've been conditioned to accept that. We've got more people on food stamps, more people on disability, uh, more people essentially dependent on government. We're going the wrong direction. And unfortunately, people have come to the place where I think we've been conditioned to accept this kind of failure. And, and I believe it's time for us to turn this around. Vince, before we get your opinion on a couple of national issues as well, because certainly should you get to Washington, you're going to be involved in a lot of this. Uh, the thing that catches my eye here is you're the first Republican in the race, and only 16% of the voters in your district are registered Republicans. Vince, I got to tell you, you got a big hill to climb right here. So how do you climb that hill and get yourself elected? Well, I'll tell you one of the things that uh, there are a couple of things you should know. One of them is uh, with any political race, one of the most significant factors is name recognition. In the district where I'm running, most of the voters are in Mecklenburg County, where I live. And that's significant. The other thing is, I dare to believe that 
people are increasingly desperate and concerned about their future and i think they're discovering that fifty years of policies and we're talking about fifteen year in fifty years not just one president or one congress these policies are not working and i think people will want to hear a fresh message about opportunity about job creation about a stronger economy and basically putting our communities back together so uh, I just dare to believe that a message of hope is going to resonate with people who are really looking for genuine hope, not fake hope. Is a message of hope, though, enough when you consider that right now, if you look at a number of studies and stories, they will tell you that this is a very divided nation. This is a nation that votes, that stays, that has friends on the right and on the left, and there is very little mix between the two right now. There's very little interaction here or wanting to get involved on the other side or even wanting to listen to the other side. So then the biggest question, I think, is why would those on the left, your Democratic side, why would they be attracted to you? I think that's something that every candidate has to overcome. You've got to reach across that aisle sooner or later. Absolutely. And one of the things that I'm attempting to do is to communicate a transcendent message. I'm not going out speaking a Democrat message or a Republican message. I'm speaking an American message, a liberty message, an economic freedom message, a prosperity message. And I think it's a language that a lot of people are going to understand uh, in contrast to a lot of things that they have heard before. So um, I think that's another important part about this race is that it's important that we transcend all of the traditional labels and all of the traditional conversations we have. And, and one of the things I want to do is, is to be part of changing that so that we're able to move beyond politics and talk about common sense. And that, that's really what we're talking about here. All right, Vince, you're not a reporter anymore. You get to go ahead and face it. Now you get it from one of your, your former peers sitting on this side. So I'll throw a couple things at you right now. Obamacare, replace or repair? Replace. And let me just explain what that should mean. Please. Replace has to mean returning to market, free market principles. Uh, the unfortunate thing is there's not been the leadership in the past to do what's necessary, which is to get the government out of this area as much as possible. See, the government caused a lot of the problems as it relates to cost and as it relates to supply of health care, uh, meeting the health care needs of people. So I favor doing everything we can to return to a free market system. Let's open it up so there can be competition of, of health insurance providers all across the country, across state lines. These are the kind of free market solutions we need to apply here. All right, let's look to the international stage then. The way President Obama is currently dealing with the situation in Iraq, what is your opinion of how he's dealing with it and how you might do it differently? Well, to be honest with you, um, I'm not sure that there's a really good answer here. And part of the problem is that you have a history of leading from behind. And I don't know how you fix the current situation that we have right now. Uh, I do believe in the philosophy of peace through strength. And because we have not uh, communicated strength in the past, now I think we're reaping the harvest of, of, of poor leadership. And i I be honest with you, I don't know how to... Uh, to provide a solution for this. I will say that the American people, I, I don't think, have the stomach for getting involved militarily again. I think it's unfortunate, but I think we have allowed this situation to get out of control. It was foreseeable. There was a lot of gloating, and unfortunately now we find a lot of bloodshed, and uh, my fear is the worst is yet to come. We're dealing with a lot of issues here today as far as Iran and Iraq are concerned. It has the entire nation talking. You certainly talked about it as well. You touched on it just a little bit. We have had so many people say there is simply no stomach for the American people to put more military involved in Iran or, or Iraq, I should say. But what about dealing with Iran? There seems to be, and it is the question of the day. We're talking to a lot of people here right now, getting in bed with Iran and working with them in order to try and salvage things in Iraq. What's your take? My take is, I think we stay out of it. Um, I host a radio talk show, and I had a guest just the other day who was sharing perspective on this, and I agree with them 100%. I think we're at the point we probably just need to stay entirely out of the situation. Uh, it's unfortunate it's gone the direction that it has, but uh, at this point, I, I, how do you pick a good side here? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that question because I, I don't know that there is a good side. Uh, I tend to uh, think that you I, would... You, please, go ahead, finish. No, that was really what I was, uh, the extent of what I was communicating there. There's really no good side here. And uh, I think one of the things that we have to do uh, in terms of our engagement is to recognize the United States cannot continue to be the policeman of the world. 
uh, we've got to take care of ourselves. I delivered a foreign policy message at a rally a few years ago, and I borrowed an expression from my wife. Uh, she made reference to what happens when you get on a plane. They tell you if there's decompression, the masks fall down. The first thing you do is you put your own mask on. The United <laughs> States of America has its own mask on. We've we got will. economic problems. We've got all kinds of other issues. Let's get our own house in order and stop trying to fix other nations. Uh, it's it's really a losing proposition. For All America. right, we're going to have to end it there. Vince Coakley, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we'll talk again. Good luck. Thank you very much. Vince Coakley joining us. He's had some things to say. You get your things to say, of course, always here. Social media is the way to get a hold of us right here at Newsmax. Because here on Midpoint, every day, we question everything.